With beautiful surroundings, comfortable gathering spaces, and picturesque views, the campus of Atria Woodbriar offers the standard of senior living long preferred by the most discerning older adults on Cape Cod. Atria Woodbriar Place, a new state-of-the-art building, offers independent and assisted living options with luxurious amenities and environmentally friendly design and construction. Atria Woodbriar, 389 Gifford Street, Falmouth, 508-495. Five five zero zero. Remember, WC Communications is your printing team. We are calm and cool under pressure. You can call us at 508-563-7366 or toll free at 1-800-696-7303. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Monday, March 24, 2014 meeting of the Falmouth Board of Selectmen. We are returning to open session from a prior executive session. I invite you all to rise and join the board as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, 
one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. My name is Brent Putnam. I'm chairman of the Board of Selectmen. To my left is Selectman Pat Flynn, Town Manager Julian Suso, and Assistant Town Manager Heather Harper. To my right is Vice Chair Doug Jones and Selectman Kevin Murphy and Rebecca Moffitt. If you have a cell phone or some other device that might spontaneously make noise, we ask that you silence it for the duration of your time here with us. Please refrain from any private conversations here in the room or immediately outside in the hallway because it can interrupt the proceedings. If you'd wish to speak this evening, and there will be opportunities for public comment, we ask that you wait to be recognized by the chair. When you are recognized, please come to the lectern. Identify yourself for the record. We may know who you are, <coughs> but that doesn't mean the audience or our recording secretary do. And please direct all of your comments and questions through the chair. Uh, if you choose to leave early, please do so quietly, because obviously you're leaving early and we still have business to conduct. Uh, we do have a speaker's policy, a copy of which is on the door and at the lectern, and we ask that all speakers adhere to that. Anyone who wishes to record the meeting, uh, you may do so via audio, simply need to announce that to the board. If you'd wish to uh, record the meeting using video, you will need to get permission from the board. So at this time, is there anyone who wishes to record the meeting, audio or video? Okay. Hearing none, we'll go on to the first item on our agenda, which are announcements. Ms. Flynn, you had one? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. I wanted to uh, remind all of you here and those at home that there is going to be an opiate forum at Falmouth High School this Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Uh, I don't think I need to uh, stress at all the, the serious nature of opiate addiction on the Cape. Uh, the use of opiates and the huge problem that is causing both uh, among young people and older people as well. I might mention that three of the police departments, uh, Mashpee, uh, Barnstable, and Yarmouth, have um, um, created a, a pilot special uh, street crime unit of police officers who are working uh, outside of their, their regular jobs. Uh, they're working um, every day of the week, uh, every shift of the week, and um, they are crossing jurisdictional lines, which they are able to do because they are also sworn as sheriffs, which allows them to do that. It is a pilot program. Uh, they need additional funds, and we're hoping that um, the, uh, the state will be able to provide some of those funds. It's, it's a way to really, I think, to get far more serious about this whole issue. So I would encourage all of you who, who really take this issue seriously to, to come to the forum Wednesday, March 27th at 7 p.m. at the Falmouth High School. Thank you. Any other announcements from the board? Town Manager's office? Yes, sir. Okay. We do have some committee vacancies that I'd like to announce. There are two positions available for the Affirmative Action Committee, one position for the Board of Assessors, two for the Building Code Board of Appeals, two positions for the Cable Advisory Committee, one full and one alternate and two alternate positions available for the Conservation Commission, uh, one alternate position for the Cape Light Compact, six positions on the Cultural Council, two alternate positions on the Design Review Committee, two positions on the Commission on Disabilities, one position on the Finance Committee. There is one full and one alternate position for the Historic Districts Commission, three positions for the Human Services Committee, one position for the Solid Waste Advisory Committee, the Steamship Authority Port Council, that position is vacant. There are four positions available for the Substance Abuse Commission, three positions for the Town Building Committee, three positions for the Transportation Management Committee, and one for the Waterways Committee. Anyone interested, please come to the Town Hall, the Town Manager and Selectman's Office, fill out an application, and we'll have you in here for an interview. If there are no other announcements, We'll move on to the public comment section of our agenda. This is an opportunity for the public to provide comment on any items that are not on the agenda. It's 10 minutes maximum. Each individual has a maximum of two minutes. And again, we ask that you adhere to the speaker's policy. Mr. Finner, you'd like to speak. Mark Fitter in Precinct 6, candidate for uh, Board of Selectmen. <clears throat> Last week, uh, you voted on uh, a policy. Um, and it's the policy of this board, when you are voting or considering policy, that you take no input from the public. 
Um, firstly, I disagree with this because it is the public's business that you're doing. So they should be allowed in on any discussion of the, the methods and manners that you uh, uh, approach this. But more specifically, last week, before you set the, um, or voted on the uh, um, betterment for the sewer, you had to clean up an old policy that you had from the first sewering. Um, you went on at length and discussed how it was not fair to businesses, the price was too high, uh, when the reality is over 95% of the T-ticket um, sewering is residential homes. What you omitted from this discussion, um, it's obfuscation, I think it's something that the public should have known, was that in voting down that policy, you also voted down the 45% betterment that was policy and was charged on the original sewering and uh, raised it to 70%. I think that's a piece of information that the public should have been provided with and I think that people in uh, the sewering project should question why uh, others paid 45% betterment and they pay 70. And as I said again, you have further policy discussion tonight and I think that in the future uh, the public should be involved as it is their business. Thank you. Thank you. What anyone else? Going once. Going twice. All right, then we'll move on to the next item on our agenda. Thank you. We have minutes. March 10, 2014, public session. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move approval of the March 10th. 2014 public session. Second. A motion and a second to approve the minutes as presented. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Okay. Unanimous. Uh, the March 10, 2014 executive session. Uh, there were two parts to this. I would move approval of the executive session from March 10, 2014. Uh, concerning the litigation Valley Me case and not release those. Okay. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And, and I the believe I, would, I think we can move approval of the item two, purchase conservation restriction Hui land and release these minutes. Um, Mr. Suso, is that correct? Is there any restriction on us releasing the discussion regarding the conservation restriction? Uh, none that I'm aware of, it's part of the same immediately, but I believe they're both uh, listed on the same. Um, they are on separate mm -hmm. sheets, so we could potentially release these to the public if there's no uh, legal reasons for us to do so, to uh, withhold them. Mr. Chairman, may I, uh, may I ask the board's indulgence when, when I check with town council and report back to you a week hence. Okay. And just to I would amend my motion certain. just to uh, approve them and not release at this time. Second. So the motion a second to approve those minutes and not release them at this time. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Unanimous. All right. And we have the summary of actions, which is pretty thick this evening. Mr. Chairman, before we get going on the summary of actions, I'd like to make a disclosure that I'm a holder of an all-alcoholic seasonal liquor license. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Mr. Chairman, I would like to hold 1A, 1F, and number 12. Does anyone have any need to hold any others? And we can just work through the rest of them. Uh, 1B okay. and 5. <coughs> Number five. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay, I'll read through the list of the ones that have not been held, and I'll be looking for a motion to approve these. Cinco de Mayo Celebration <coughs> Academy Lane, Monday, May 5th, 2014. Run Jack Run, Family Fun Run slash Walk, Falmouth High School Field to Trotting Park Fields, Friday, July 4, 2014. Woods Hole May Fest, Taft Playground, Saturday, May 24, 2014. Wedding parking, Surf Drive Beach parking lot, October 4, 2014, Bullis Bushy. Wedding ceremony, Old Silver Beach, October 4, 2014, Bus. 
Wedding Ceremony, Old Silver Beach, September 20, 2014, LeBlanc Kennedy. One Day Liquor License, Cinco de Mayo Celebration, Compassionate Care ALS, May 5, 2014. One Day Liquor License, West Falmouth Library, Murder Mystery Evening, March 29, 2014. One Day Liquor License, West Falmouth Library, Fundraising Event, April 12, 2014. Authorized Town Manager to award Amendment 1 in the amount of $22,500 to Science Wares and a time extension to July 31, 2014 to the original contract dated February 25, 2013. Accept donation to the Falmouth, Veteran, Falmouth Veterans Council donation account from VFW Post in the amount of $500. Payment from the Beach Department donation account, Zoll Medical Corporation, $3,132.20. Accept donation of one bike rack from the Friends of Falmouth Bikeways and Corner Cycle. Old Stone Dock request for letter of support to delay implementation of Bigger Waters Act that will change the maps of the floodplain. Approve EDIC application for the owner's agent technical assistant grant. And finally, authorize the town manager to sign DEP activity use limitation release. Move the items as you've mentioned. Second. So we have a motion and a second for all items except 1A, 1B, 1F, number 5, and number 12. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Unanimous. All right. And Ms. Flynn? Um, A. A is the Falmouth Classic Car Club, and this is being proposed from Arena Park on the dates of uh, May 18, 2014. June 22nd, 2014, 8 2014, and 7-6-2014. And I'm, I held this because 7-6 is the Sunday of the fireworks uh, weekend. And uh, there are lots and lots of people in town on that day. And Marina Park is also used by some of our emergency services uh, employees. So I would like to uh, make the motion that we approve all the dates except July 6, 2014, and send it back to the uh, chamber and ask them if they could come up with a different date that doesn't conflict with the fireworks weekend. Okay. I know we have a representative. Would you like to say a few words? Can you offer, shed some light on this, perhaps? Please. Uh, Derek Sutton, representing Falmouth Classic Car Club. We originally requested July 20th, and the town requested that we alter the date, and we accepted the offer to July 6th, so this comes as a little bit of a surprise to us. Um, there's a little bit of a conflict for us making even another date, which is possibly um, July 13th, but a pre the Saturday person uh, apparently is going to be breaking down their their display or whatever on uh, um, on Sunday, so that makes that date not available. You do know that, that you know we did four dates and we tried to you know spread them out. Um, if it's any consolation, generally we're 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 gone by 3 p.m. Actually, most people are probably gone by 2 p.m. If that helps at all. Just so, so to explain. The date of the 6th was actually recommended by, by the, the town, town manager's office. Yes. Hey, Mr. Chairman, the reason for that was that the uh, item B, the cultural survival, was being moved from uh, Peg Newton Park to the marina on that weekend. And that made that weekend not available to try and... The 19th. Uh, the 19th and 20th to, uh, to relocate. Um, and that, the 20th, was originally what they preferred, so we asked them <coughs> to consider an alternate date, and the 6th uh, six, six was the one suggested. I'm actually comfortable with the 6th. I, I know that they do tend to, to break up early, and if the fireworks happen to be, are, are they, are the fireworks on the, are on Friday, so um, assuming, hoping for good weather, yeah. that uh, it shouldn't have an impact, I would think. Um, a question, and... and Number one is if fireworks, because of weather, uh, get canceled, they would probably move to the following night. So that would even make the schedule a little bit tighter, from the 4th to the 5th, and then this would be on the 6th. Um, 
we have often talked about the Gus Candy Center as a potential for events. Would the 13th work for you at the Gus Candy Center? Do you know where I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Um, as a location, so I'm just throwing that out. As these are cars. Uh, one of the things I did notice in the in the application, there is some concern about cars being on the grass and whether that's appropriate at the band shell. I'm wondering whether the 13th would work, again, taking it away from the date that Mrs. Flynn's discussing. And uh, we don't have anything going on in this community on the 13th. We have something on the 12th, which is the reunion. The 13th could be in the Gus Canty parking lot or the adjacent grassy area. Again, we probably don't want cars on that area as well. Would that date work well, for you then? Before we get into okay. negotiating different dates, it, mm. I'd like to get a little bit more from Mr. Sutton about what it is that they do because remember, we've got a positive recommendation here from the staff for the 6th. Um, and I would imagine that they've done a considerable amount of due diligence to provide that date for us. So it, when, when you do set up and take down for this event, what's involved with that? Um, very little to the grounds. Basically, you know, we get the electricity from the band shell and we set up a, a PA system for background music and, and announcements. And um, I mean, other than parking the cars, um, there's, you know, you know, cars aren't moving, doesn't provide, uh, present a danger to the public or anything. And you've probably all seen that, you know, during the dream cruise on the library lawn, we've never damaged any grass or property. And I'm actually proud to say that we usually leave the crowns cleaner than when we, than we find it. And we, we kind of take pride for that. Um, anyway, as far as, it's very little breakdown, break, you know, set up and break down, it's, it's quick. My, my suggestion, really, the reason I, I brought this up is because there are far more people here, almost as many, not quite, on July 4th weekend as there are, when, especially when the July 4th is on a Friday and part of a weekend, mm -hmm. as opposed to if it's just <coughs> in the middle of the week. It certainly isn't as great as the number of people who are here in the road race, which is get upwards yeah. of 100,000 mm -hmm. people. But I would say that there are probably at least 80,000 people, if not more, on the 4th of July. And it's just the volume of people, and when it's on a Friday, they have either been here all week on vacation or they're getting ready to take vacation for the following week. And there's uh, a large amount of people here all at one time. And it's just that the town is very crowded on that particular day. And there are people coming and there are people leaving because it's on a Sunday. And it would just seem to me that you would get better participation if it were not on this particular day. And it would ease, I think, a lot of the burden of all the traffic on that particular Sunday of a fireworks weekend. So I, I, my suggestion was we approve the other dates and just ask you to take this under advisement for a week and see if you couldn't, by working with your group, come up with maybe a different date and come back and let us know the following week or let the town manager's office know, and then we could take it up finally next week because we are meeting the following week. Maybe you, you want to come back and say, we've looked at it every possible way and this is the only way we can do it, and that's fine if you come back with that, but at least take a look at it and see if maybe there isn't another day that would substitute for July 6th. Okay, just for my own clarification yeah. to bring to my people, it would be two choices, hold our guns, so to speak. We'd like to keep it on. Saturday, I mean Sunday, I mean, we do like that location and a lot of people that attend like that location and the alternate would be on the 13th but at the Gus Canty parking um, parking space like I can certainly bring That's that to my suggested. people and bring that back to Mr. Sousa's office this week. Ms. Moffitt, you had something? No, I think that uh, Mrs. Flynn has said exactly what I'm thinking is that it's becoming too crowded. And it's a point of, as I'm looking at yours, you're, you're thinking probably 200 people. And I think 200 people, and I think how many extra cars when we already have events going on. My issue is the parking for the people who are going to come to your activity. And that's, that's my thought about it, is it's one of those weekends that there are more people than other weekends. 
and we and we need to go through that process of where do all of those cars park? Well, as far as spectators go, I don't believe many spectators actually occupy spaces. A lot of the people that attend our events actually they attend the event, their cars are parked on, and then they go down to the flying bridge or maybe into town. I've never seen people, just spectators, so to speak, park on the street or anything. Maybe a few on Queen Street or something, but it's never been a problem, not that I've, I've been aware of. Um, and I'm, I'm going to stick up for you a little bit. <clears throat> this was not the date you picked originally. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so maybe we'll go back to the date you picked originally and see if we can find another location. We're all coming down on 4th of July. I mean, mm -hmm. and that's where the, you didn't pick this yeah. date. It, it, now all of a sudden you're in the trick box because mm -hmm. they moved you to this date. And, and But maybe you could go to the other dates and find, we could find a location that would make you comfortable. Certainly bring it to uh, the president, and, okay. you know, between me, the president, and the vice president, we will make a decision. Great. Okay. All right. Well, we have a motion and a second. Um, I, I would like to remind the board, and I'm going to say that I'm going to vote against this motion, and not because I'm, I have a problem with Mr. Sutton's request or his group's request, but because, quite frankly, I think we're missing the point of establishing the events policy and, and the town manager's office asking them to do the, the legwork for us. Um, Mr. Sutton and his group brought before, they did what was needed to do. They proposed dates. The town manager's office vetted everything. They provided an alternate date. Um, they've given us the recommendation and quite frankly we're second guessing it based on a few minutes discussion about what traffic might be around on a Sunday in the middle of July. I understand the traffic's going to be there. It's going to be in the entire town during July and August in the summertime. And the reality is, is that um, you know, this event has been held for, now as long as I can remember, yeah. years and years. Years, I've, years. I've heard no complaints whatsoever about this event over the years. And here we are second guessing staff after we asked them to do this. So um, I'm going to vote against this motion, not because I have a problem with the event, but because I have a problem with the motion. Any last discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Well, motion carries four to one. I am the dissenting vote. Thank you very much. I Thank appreciate you. that. Ms. Moffitt, you held item B. Well, now I have to get over there to see what, the, see what that is. Cultural survival. Uh, and this is the one that is over at um, Marina Park. Is there anyone here? From the Cultural Survival? No, this is the Cultural Survival Festival, which in years past has been held at uh, mm -hmm. Pig Noonan Park. Mm hmm and, and no one is present? Um, well, I, I was just, um, if there isn't anyone, my question is, where are they going to park their cars when they're over at Marina Park? And they're looking at 1,000 to 2,000 people. So uh, one of the issues is that they're going to use the Mullen Hall lot, but that isn't for the people. That's for the trucks that are coming in with all of the supplies. So I understand if they're just if they're going to be going back and forth. Um, I'm not going to agree with this. Um, we can have the motion on it, but I do not agree with this number of people and coming into um, into the marina until I can speak to someone who's going to tell me where all these thousand and two thousand people are going to park. Can I make a suggestion? Uh, I'd make a motion to approve this pending uh, a required meeting three weeks before with uh, the town manager's office, uh, the police department, the uh, uh, public safety, and the Department of Public Works, which we do on very uh, a lot of events. We do require those meetings. So we just make this approval contingent on that, that the issues of parking the issues that were brought up uh, about cleanliness and things be addressed at a meeting with the organizer of the event. So I'll that second would... that motion. Is that a motion? Yes, it is. So we have a motion and a second. Um, I, you know, I'm going to raise the same issues I did before. The town manager's office has vetted this. They've provided recommendations to us, and it sounds like we're second-guessing this. If, if we don't want the town manager's office 
to do the legwork for us, then we shouldn't be asking them to go through all these hoops to present this information to us. It's that simple, folks. Well, I think my issue, um, my issue is concerns the parking, is not one of the discussions that they are having <coughs> as they're vetting each one of those. The, the question about parking is not on the list of their, what they're discussing. They're checking dates, and there's a, a whole list. We all know that. My issue is that when you bring 1,000 to 2,000 people into the town for one activity, where are those cars going to park? for one to 2,000 people. Mr. Jones? And I would support what you've been saying, Mr. Chair, that the fact that no one's here is because they've been meeting with our working group, and their understanding is the recommendation is a positive one, and that we are going to be moving forward with that. Uh, to then ask them to come to this meeting after they've already come to that other meeting, um, I agree that the, we've asked our working group to look into these things and to consider these issues, and I would do everything I can to support what the recommendation is. Ms. Harper, so. Just to follow on, um, just so you're clear on what the recommendation of the staff working group was, the original application, as you recall, came into Peg Noonan Park, and the recommendation of the staff working group was not recommended. And we uh, declined that application and asked this applicant to propose an alternate location. The alternate location that they proposed, having been at Peg Noonan Park for several years, uh, was Marina Park, um, and the staff was inclined to allow this for at least this year to determine whether that was a viable alternative um, to the the uh, location had previously been in. I, I think, though, the intent of the motion is not to deny the application, is to simply say, because of the volume of people that they put, that they indicated on their application are going to attend, that the motion is suggesting that having a meeting with the police department and, and DPW because of uh, picking up trash and all of that would be important to have, and it's just suggesting that that meeting take place about three weeks before the event so that the town is prepared to handle the issues. And I think that's a good, I think that's a good suggestion, it particularly is, when you're having that many people involved in a, in a single event. It is a recommendation. I've seen some of the other, recommend, some of the other upcoming events <coughs> to have that kind of a meeting. Yeah. And I'm wondering if that's a typical thing that we're now starting to set up. I think for the Zuma one, and for, um, there was another thing I think we're looking at tonight also that's asking for that set up meeting three weeks in advance, I think for the fireworks. And I don't really believe that that's part of the policy that the um, town, uh, what are we calling them, the events group is, is uh, been asked to address. That's not their issue, that's our issue. They simply recommend the, the, um, the venue but when it comes to dealing with, you know, other issues like the parking or the, uh, the numbers of people or all of that, that really comes back to us to determine how that should best be handled because we have the capacity to be able to say we need you to meet with the police department and all that, whereas they don't. So I think it's perfectly appropriate to add that to the motion. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll respectfully disagree with you. I, I agree that we, we have formulated a policy to ask a committee to analyze these and come up with a recommendation. That was the reason we came up with the policy is because we got different, different pieces of paper at different times and a lot of times those pieces of paper did not accompany the application. The buck stops here as elected officials. If something goes wrong with one of these events, no one's going to call the people on the review list. They're going to call Kevin Murphy. They're going to call you. They're going to call you and you. Bottom line is we have a fiduciary responsibility, the responsibility of the people who pay taxes, people who vote in this community, to bring up what we think as elected officials things that could possibly go wrong. Because guess what? Uh, uh, you know, a pound of prevention is, is a lot better than, than, than having something, you know, cut off at the end. Bottom line is, if we try to plan them properly and we bring up as elected officials some things that we know constituencies out there may object to or may want planned a little bit better, so be it. Otherwise, why, don't, why even put them on the agenda? I mean, if we're just going to rubber stamp them, that was the whole reason we came up with the policy to put them on the agenda, is in case a member of the board had a question and wanted a little bit more work on it. I, I'll support 
Ms. Moffitt's uh, uh, suggestion here, but I think there was an easy compromise, and the compromise is the fact we'll bring them in three weeks before, and we'll say, okay, let's review it. Because guess what? No one wants the phone calls, nor do the organizers want the phone calls. So uh, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying we're not going to give it to them. I'm just I, saying I, let's, mm -hmm. let's make sure that we plan it properly. And, Mr. Murphy, I'm not saying that we're not going to give it to them either. But, I, again, um, this is the checklist that they've provided us, and, in fact, the police department has looked at this. The fire department has looked at this. The parks department, the highway department. Um, again, we're attaching additional restrictions, conditions, wherever you want to call them. I understand that, um, I understand where you folks are coming from, but it seems to me that it's redundant because the work's already been done. Uh, they've already been consulted the various departments, they already know the event is forthcoming. And can we're basically, I, I Can I ask one question, Mr. Chairman, through, so. through you? Did the folks from the Cultural Survival come to the meeting? They were available on conference call. Unacceptable. Enough said. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Mm -hmm. Motion well, carries. In favor of having a meeting before. Excuse me, I reversed that. Okay. 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 So I'm in favor. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the motion carries four to one. Okay. All right, Miss Flynn, you yes, held I item F. Well, I only held this because Thank the um, events committee does not recommend it. The uh, the Castleberry Americana Arts and Crafts Festival. They are new. This is the first time I think they have come to the town. And they are also requesting um, the 4th of July weekend for Marina Park. And it is impossible, I think, to use Marina Park because the fire department uses it on Saturday for sure. And then if the, if the fireworks are on Sat or Friday and Saturday, then. So since the, I just wanted to point out that since the events committee also recommended that they uh, find a different date that we, that I certainly would make a motion to support that recommendation that they find a different date and not grant the dates that they requested. I was reading this as a not recommend, following their recommendation, I'm not yeah. recommending this. Right. It so the motion is to accept the recommendation of the events committee. Yes. All right, so it does know, or well, we have a motion to accept the recommendation of the events committee, which is essentially to deny the application right. at this time. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, Terry Mullen, did you want to say a few things? That, uh, you have, it looks like you've requested alternate dates, and I you have. can come back in and work with the town staff to address that. We'd like to request August 30 and 31, which is Labor Day weekend, but not the Monday, just the Saturday and Sunday. We need the Friday for set-up date, and uh, this would be our first event in Falmouth, but we're not new. We've been doing this 25 years. Okay. Okay. Um, at this point, though, we'll ask you to come back in, confirm with staff, make sure that all the issues have been addressed, and then it'll come back to so us for approval. Uh, I was just brought down here just to be denied, but it's just a just a new date. But everything on the application is okay except for the date. Well, well the date town staff is going to have to look at it and determine if there are any conflicts, if uh, the the other town departments have any issues with that particular date. Oh, I got an email from Diane saying that the rec department said the park is available for those dates. Well, well the rec department is one it's of many one. departments okay. that have to look into this. Please, fire, parks. Um, so I never knew there was a working group, and I put my application in in September. It's a new process this year that was uh, the the result of the board's special events policy that was enacted late last year in order to try to get a handle on all of the events that are going on in Falmouth. And as you can see, even with the policy in place, there's still a little bit of contention from time to time. There's a lot that goes on in the summertime, and we're trying to get we're our heads around it. <laughs> okay. So. so where do I go from here? Do I call and see when my dates can be looked at? Yes. Reach out to staff tomorrow, find oh. out if they want to sit down with you at all, and. Um, Dope. I would say, too, that most uh, events, probably like cultural survival as well, people just come for like half an hour, 45 minutes. They just come and shop the booths. They're not there for the whole entire event. You don't have a thousand people on site at one time. And our events are self-contained. We always rent local dumpsters and toilets. We hire a jazz band. We have a lot of craft demonstrations. And it's a juried arts and craft event. So I hope to come back. 
Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Um, it, it just. In, I'm, I, I don't need you on this. I just make a comment <laughs> that, uh, the, you know, the presenter summed it up, that people come and shop. Um, we have a lot of folks in this community that pay rent in their stores year-round. And uh, we have this and the cultural survival and whatever that come into this community for one day. Um, bring artisans into this community who probably typically don't um, live in this community, uh, make their goods in this community and uh, they make money in this community and, and leave this community. So that, I'm just going to leave that as a comment for the You board. should know, too, they all stay locally. They put up in local hotels. They eat locally. We dine. We go to the theater. So we're a nice little shot in the Yankee local economy, too. We're not just coming and taking. We promote the event. We're in every best read guide. We're members of the chamber. We become a, a wanted tenant. We never want to bring an event to where we're not wanted. Mm -hmm. so, Thank you. It's all American made. All right? Thank you. Thank you. All right, motion and a second then to accept the uh, committee recommendation and to deny the event on this particular day. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? It's unanimous. Uh, Ms. Moffitt, you held item five. Uh, on the reunions of summer past, is there anyone here? Yes. Okay. My name is Don Cross. Yes. Okay. And I see this is a fundraiser for the Mass uh, Fallen Heroes. Yes. So at one point it is not. Um, it is. It is for profit. But the you have that marked as for profit. Well, be, but the reason I chose that is because we. I am not specifically a nonprofit. They are a nonprofit, and all our any proceeds are made directly to them. So we're not taking any money in our names at all. Any checks or anything received will go to Mass Fallen Heroes into a separate account. We make not a dime off this. They actually pay the checks out to uh, the people who are offering the services. That, that was one question. So I just couldn't answer that question so technically. Was, yes, that's, I that's, see that you, you did that. And you're expecting about 1,500 people between the hours of 4 and 10? That's correct. And is there entertainment? That was the other part um, that I there just is, to clarify, yes. Mr. Chair, yeah. excuse okay. me. This is the liquor license we're approving only. That we've already approved this event. We have approved the event. And this is just the liquor li the one day liquor license that we're up for tonight. Okay. Okay. Um, can I make a couple couple of comments? Last year we approved the license till nine, the event goes till ten. Um, yeah, the, we approved the liquor license till nine. Oh, I see. Okay. The yeah. event goes till fair 10. enough. Yeah. Fenway Park, they don't serve until understandable. Yeah. So I think it's fair to say sure. go till nine o'clock. Yeah. And I don't have a problem. That's, a, that's no problem. Um, I'm in, in the normal requirements, liquor liability insurance and things like that. Yes, nature. and uh, we do have two and a half million dollar policy there through John uh, okay. Mark Ferreira. Okay. So in that. other words, and we can supply that in if it's through them that you. The service will be tipped straight, right? Correct. Okay, great. Yep. Okay. Okay. So I make okay. a motion to approve with the license from 4 to 9 p.m. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Unanimous. Thank you Thank very you. much. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Thank you. And Ms. Flynn, you held item 12. I held item 12 uh, because <laughs> the. Um, the appointment of the Chamber of Commerce representative to the Golf Advisory Committee um, happens also to be an employee of the Whitsell Golf Club. And uh, that was sort of learned this afternoon. And uh, Town Council asked that we defer that until he can look at whether or not there may be a conflict of interest there. Right. So we just take no action, no action. is what I'm suggesting. Okay. Thank you and for bringing that, that to our attention. All right, that takes care of everything on the summary of actions. We now have a sign hearing. This is a request for 12 off-premises signs. Daffodil days. Make a motion to approve. Second. That was easy. Yeah. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? It's unanimous. That's right, April 19th, is that right? 
Yes, I believe that's correct. Two dates. April 26th is the date. Oh, April, sorry, April 19th and 26th. 26, right. There's, um, yeah. All right. Next item on the agenda, we have a request for special event, the 4th of July fireworks, Falmouth High Speech. Mr. Drillet. Good evening. Uh, Doug Strollett from the Falmouth Fireworks Committee. I'm here to ask permission for our 34th annual fireworks show on July 4th, the rain date of July 5th. Um, use uh, the ball field in the heights and the beach out front and on the, uh, any other place that we can use to host the people, as usual. Right. Tell us a little bit, I've heard there's insurance now. Um, we're getting the, buy some rain insurance. There's no such thing as fog insurance. <laughs> <laughs> but let's face it, if we get the rain, we know that um, the possibility we could have um, fog. Okay. So we're looking into that, yes. Very good. That way I don't have to ask Julia to hold off for a payment. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions from the board? Yeah. Um, just to, to point out once again, as I'm sure it's been pointed out to you, to increase the number of porta potties uh, facilities at the file fights area. We did that last year. Uh, you probably like still had complaints. I could probably put a thousand out there, you still have complaints. I'll increase it. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve and uh, with the conditions set forth by the committee. Uh, One other thing, excuse me, yeah. that Ms. Hopper will. Uh, Arrange a meeting approximately two weeks before the show with all the department heads. She'll be in charge of that. You're, you're taking away my thunder. It's all part of my, uh, all right, my motion. Go ahead, go. go. I want to roll. <laughs> it wasn't over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor. Right? I know, right? I know. I know. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> now you broke my stride. Uh, that uh, you'll sustain the traffic plan implemented in 2013. Increase the number of porta potty facilities at Falmouth Heights Beach area. Uh, attend a pre event meeting on June the 26th at 10 a.m. in Town Hall with all public safety and departments. Uh, contact and inspectional services 48 hours to, uh, prior to the event for 10 permits uh, and inspections, if applicable. And contact the fire department to arrange for an inspection of food, equipment, uh, food cooking equipment, if applicable. So that's my motion. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, position. Great event. Thank you. Thank you, Dutch. Thank you. Thank you for all, all your work, Dutch. Next item on the agenda is a request from the West Falmouth Playground Renovation Project and Together We Can to engrave a rock at the Swift Park in West Falmouth. We have a representative from the... Susan Moran, I'm the president of the West Falmouth Village Association, and I'm here for Sandy Cooney, also who is the treasurer of Falmouth Together We Can. Um, it, this is a proud moment for the project. It was a collaboration um, led by my son, Jake Barry, and heavily involving the West Falmouth Village Association, the Falmouth Recreation Department, and Falmouth Together We Can. And before the board tonight is the, um, a request to commemorate the service of everyone involved and to etch a rock for the playground, similar to the one that was there when it was originally um, built by the, the firefighters and um, by Mrs. Swift's family and, and the, collab the, you know, the collaboration, um, which was about 1959 or so. So this is echoing you know, the, the history of the park and um, we request that there be a favorable vote. Um, the actual, uh, the rock will read, it's Swift Playground Renovation, thanks to Jake Barry, West Falmouth Village Association, and Falmouth Together We Can 2013. So the original rock is still there, the original plaque? Mm -hmm. uh, it is, and in fact, we're, we have a volunteer who's going to spruce that up and, and make it a little more readable and, and kind of parallel the new one. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion? All Thank those you. In favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Unanimous. Thank you. 
Next item on the agenda, Bike Path Connector License Agreement, Town of Falmouth and Steamship Authority. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, just want to advise the board that we still have uh, some deliberations occurring between the Steamship Authority's legal counsel and the town. Uh, and as a result, I'm asking if the board would defer uh, action on this uh, for a week to two weeks, uh, either your last meeting in March or your uh, early, early meeting in April. Uh, so we can bring that to full closure and bring you the final package. Right. Any questions at this time? All right. We don't need to take any action this evening. We'll put it on a future agenda. All right. Next item on the agenda, we have Great Bay Street. Uh, another section is being closed between Reynolds Street and Mayflower Street. Um, Mr. Suso, Mr. McCarnady, who gets this one? Town Engineer Peter McConaughey is going to carry the ball. I will take it. Good evening, Peter McConaughey, Town Engineer. Um, before you tonight for a request for another closure of Great Bay Street, um, I've been before the board uh, twice in the past for uh, several sections of roadway to be closed. Uh, this section of roadway is from Reynolds Street to Mayflower Street, approximately 200 feet. Um, previously, uh, Iroquois Street, the three um, previous roadways were closed. Iroquois Street, Toledo Street, Reynolds Street was blocked off. At the end of Reynolds Street, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, the, a um, severe erosion going off from the coastal bank down to the bottom of the, uh, the bottom of the uh, shore where uh, I, I think, uh, I believe a lot of the stormwater coming down Reynolds Street is, is contributing to the, uh, to the problem. And what is happening is that uh, Public Works has placed some large boulders at the end of, um, the end of the roadway, and, and they're getting closer and closer to the edge of the bank with the with the ero excuse me with the erosion. So what we propose to do is block off the remainder of Reynolds Street and block off um, Mayflower Street. So vehicles will be able to go down Mayflower Street and travel south, um, but they will not be able to travel north. There is one house on the uh, corner of Mayflower Street and Great Bay Street with two driveways: uh, one driveway on Mayflower Street, one driveway on Great Bay Street. The driveway on Great Bay Street um, won't be able to be will not be able to be accessed. It'll be they'll be used the uh, driveway on Mayflower Street. Questions from the board? Um, do those two driveways connect? They do not. No. So you're going to take. Excuse me. I can address that. Right, let me just ask uh, one at a time. Please. You're going to take away this property owner's rights to get to his driveway? It's been the property owner was was fully. Yeah, he's in fully consent of uh, closing the driveway. Okay. So, and I, actually, the second driveway was built to remove this first driveway. Ms. Moffitt? Uh, are people still using that road um, for walking or walking their dogs or recreation? Yes. Is there any thought about the limit of that? I mean, is that contributing any other problems? Because there, oh, there were so many people that would walk that road. Yeah, I believe the walking and the and the uh, and, you know the, the recreation use the yes. walking and the dogs and and uh, that's not affecting the roadway. It's the storms and the damage from the from the uh, ocean and the shoreline coming <laughs> towards the bank. That's that that's done the damage in the past. Um, I, th I believe this winter we haven't we didn't have a severe winter as far as storms. So it's I mean we had snowstorms, but we didn't have the coastal storms to wear further of the bank. But we're still uh, in consideration with the uh, applied coastal. There's our coastal engineering contractor yes. that's looking at the design of those banks. So once that design goes through, we'll go through the Conservation Commission and then at some point we'll be at town meeting to request some funds to see if that can be. Okay. It just seems very thin prepared. right through some of that area. I just thought maybe there was discussion of limit on that. <laughs> Right, but what happens on the it's it's what happens on that roadway is a lot of the edge of the roadway, the coastal bank is covered with uh, is covered with uh, vegetation and growth, so you don't see behind that vegetation and growth. There's a lot of erosion yep. that curls underneath the bank and going starting to go underneath the roadway. Okay, so thank you. Further questions? Well, just when you're talking about the engineering work that's in the design work, uh, is there any way to for them to to uh, determine what what's under the road, I mean, how stable it is. Yeah. Back to the point where the um, the erosion could could go under the road. I mean, is it possible to determine that? 
Yeah, basically what's what's on the bank and what's been eroding on, this, on the side of the bank to this date is basically what's under the road. It's hard pack, it's gravel. Um, it's been driven on for decades. Right. Um, so it's hard packed on gravel, but that's basically what's coming out of the slope is what's underneath the roadway. It's what underneath. Right. Questions or comments from the audience? I'll get this gentleman first and then Mr. Finneran. Bob Dolan, 78 Mayflower. I'm just here to support Mr. McConaughey in his efforts. Um, my driveway is affected by that, but I've been working with CONCOM. It's actually an asphalt driveway, so they're actually happy. I'm taking out the asphalt and moving around, putting a gravel on the other side away from the 100-foot um, coastal bank. But uh, we really appreciate what you're doing to help us. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Finneran. Mark Finneran, Precinct 6. Um, I was just wondering, is this engineering plan going to do something about the road water runoff, which is causing the erosion, and it's also attributing to the uh, uh, degradation of uh, Great Pond? Um, blocking the roads off uh, really does nothing to prevent the uh, problem, and we're going to have to deal with it one way or another. And uh, proper road water runoff remediation would uh, take care of a large percentage. I know in Little Pond it's over 20% of the... Uh, um, nit nitrogen um, uh, inflow is coming from road water runoff, and I have to assume that it'd be a similar number there. So I wondered if it's going to be dealt with properly. Thank you. Mr. McConaughey, could you address that? Yes, plan plans are the, the, uh, where we are on Great Bay Street is a lot of those side streets are private streets. They're private roads that are leading down to Great Bay Street, so we're limiting on the amount of work that we can do on those roadways. But um, several of those roads do need some drainage and some, uh, some attention for the stormwater, so we will be looking at those roadways, Reynolds Street being, being one of them. You, you, I mean, if you stand down on the beach, anyone that goes down onto the beach area can see the side of the bank and see this, the, the uh, drainage pipe sticking out of the side of the bank, so it's, it's going to need some work. Um, right now, the end of Reynolds Street is catching up very close to the, uh, the first portion up near Oak Street as far as damage to the roadway. We're, we're going to need to address that portion of the roadway. Um, because it's it's further eroding further than areas up up north, um, north of Reynolds Street. Okay. Any further questions from the public? All right, uh, we need a motion to approve the road closure. I move approval of the road closure of the section of Great Bay Street between Reynolds and Mayflower Street. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And next item on the agenda is a presentation regarding bluestone replacement on Main Street. I believe, again, Mr. McConnerty. Yeah. You, want, you want the lights down? Mr. Chairman, maybe I could make a couple introductory comments. Please. Uh, if uh, that would be permitted uh, in anticipation of Peter's presentation, the board uh, may recall uh, we've had difficulties with the originally in, in installed bluestone. It is uh, in uh, several areas beyond its useful life. And uh, we had a, an experimental uh, test replacement area uh, near Hanoush Jewelers on uh, Main Street last fall uh, where we had uh, colorized uh, stamped concrete uh, put uh, in place of the deteriorated bluestone, which in uh, several areas has become, as the board's aware, a 
uh, a public safety hazard for uh, pedestrians uh, and others uh, utilizing the sidewalks uh, uh, downtown and as well as in front of uh, town hall uh, and uh, we had a very good uh, response to that uh, experimental test area uh, that uh, Peter McConnerty oversaw and uh, Public Works working with a contractor uh, installed and we are uh, hopeful as we represented at that time uh, that we could replicate that approach in uh, other areas of town uh, to uh, achieve a similar result in a much more cost-effective way uh, with the concurrence of the board. So Peter wants to speak about that and I know the board's familiar with the uh, safety hazards that are essentially in the southern portion of Main Street uh, and in front of Town Hall with the bluestone that is uh, gone to multiple pieces in uh, many locations given the uh, challenging winter we were in the midst of. So I'll, I'll defer to Peter further for his presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Um, as Julian mentioned, the uh, Main Street, the Bluestone, the edging on the sidewalk, uh, edging, as everyone knows, is on the north side. It's on the south side from Post Office Square of the Town Green down to Shore Street. Um, the south side is deteriorating more than the, the north side. And the south side during the winter um, gets all, it does not get the sun. It, the, 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 uh, the snow and the ice stays on the sidewalk longer. The, we have uh, machinery that gets on the sidewalk that deteriorates the uh, that deter they slides along the sidewalk and it hits the tops of the uh, bluestone that shales it off and deteriorates it. Um, this is a plan that was put together for Main Street. It's it's easy to see when you have a copy in front of you on the wall on the plan that the yellows don't show up as well. But basically, it's the south side of Main Street from Post Office Road to Shore Street, including the area in front of Town Hall. The total sidewalk length is approximately a thousand feet. There is a portion of uh, bluestone that was repaired in between El March and between Cahoon Court um, last year, that will remain, the, uh, and the bluestone around it will be replaced. Uh, I, I was just going to go through a, uh, some photos showing that the bluestone, the deterioration of the bluestone. You can see it's broken up and shelled where the, where the machines get on it and just the, the, the ice gets underneath the bluestone. Basically, these photos were taken and from walking south, uh, walking east from John's shoe store towards Shore Street. So as you can see, a lot of the areas of the, uh, of the bluestone is all between the machines getting on them and, and clearing the snow and, and um, the ice and the uh, water penetration under the stone is, uh, is, deteriorating, is deteriorating the walkway. Uh, my understanding is this project was done in approximately 1998, 1999 with the bluestone uh, under the uh, presumption that the bluestone would get 10 to 12 years out of the bluestone and it's something would need, would need to be replaced with another material or replaced with the bluestone. Um, so this is 2014. We're already at 12 to 15 years um, into the cycle. So I believe the, uh, the bluestone worked. It's at the end of its lifespan right now, but it did work for the duration um, during those years. This is a, uh, a set of plans that was uh, sent to the uh, Falmouth Historic District Commission. Uh, it's on the agenda for next Monday night. Uh, basically, it's the same plan as I showed you at the beginning of the road with, with the, uh, the roadways. Um, it's hard to see in the yellow, but it, it, the yellow shows the areas that are being replaced, the sections that are being replaced, and there's little uh, arrows showing where all those photos were taken, were taken along the area. And this is basically the, the photos I just showed you. These are basically photos on the set of plans that I submitted in. And each number is, once again, each number has a section number to where it was taken on the roadway. This is a set of, uh, of uh, photos of recently stamped uh, concrete projects that were done on Main Street. Uh, the following photos were, uh, are better. Uh, are better. Uh, they're larger, they're, they're easier to see. But these are two projects that were done on Main Street um, in 2013. This area was done in front of the uh, Main Street Fire Station. It's the uh, September 11, 2001 monument. It shows the bluestone. 
and once again, the, the, the concrete, it's, uh, it's engraved, but the concrete, it's, it's mixed into the, um, the uh, color of the concrete, it's mixed in at, at the truck, so it's not <coughs> a surface treatment, it's, it's, throughout the, it's throughout the concrete mixture. That's another area, it shows the, it shows the pattern of the concrete. And this section is in, is in front of 352 Main Street, just in front of uh, Hanus Jewelers. And this is an area that was uh, previously, last year, it was uh, planted. I believe um, Miskowski Landscaping did some plantings in that area throughout the year. And working with uh, Paul Miskowski, we had some th three sections of this area that uh, we sectioned out for him to, to replant during the years. He'll replant it this year. And then the remainder of the areas, uh, we replaced the, the uh, the broken sidewalk that was in there, or actually that was a, a, a dirt area. Um, so when, when vehicles are pulling up along the curb and they were stepping out, they were stepping out into a broken sidewalk and a, uh, a dirt area that was, uh, that was unstable. And that's a close uh, section of the, the uh, stamped concrete. To this point, we, we've received many, uh, m uh, many comments and feedback for, of the uh, stamped concrete and they've all been positive. We haven't really heard anything negative for the area. Um, it works well in the area. As known, it's, it's not a stone, it, it's, a, it's a concrete, but it, it will bring it to a closely match as close as we can to the uh, blue stone that's there. And I think, I believe that's the end of the, that's the end. Mr. Jones? And you see a really significant difference between this stamping concrete and the stuff in front of the fire station, where I think the fire station stuff is really supposed to be decorative. I would think it would be very hard for a stroller or a wheelchair or uh, a walker to manage that kind of rough surface well. This is much smoother than that? It, it, it's a smoother surface, right. And, and actually in this area, this, this, this uh, section of sidewalk was done in late November. Before, it was just before the, uh, we were trying to get ready for the Christmas parade the first week of December. And what had happened is the cold weather sat, uh, set in right after we did this, a week after we did this. So we, did, we didn't have the chance to do the uh, seal coating on it. They, they seal it with a, like a sand top mixture for sealing it. So it'll have that same top effect as it would in front of the 9-11 monument. So. Um, where is the funding come from? The funding coming from this will be we from this, the, uh, the uh, town's um, the uh, funding that was in 2008, the article that was passed for sidewalk funds, between the sidewalk funds and the articles that we have for the sidewalks. So. Um, and I'm going to make a couple of comments. And gonna, I, I wholeheartedly agree that this blue stone was probably a mistake when we did it because of its durability. And uh, it's surely uh, deteriorating, but uh, um, I'm going to speak up and for the village of Woods Hole, which has sidewalks that are in some cases downright dangerous, mm -hmm. and even more so uh, since the gas company has been laying mains, that it's a patchwork down there. Uh, I'd kind of be a little upset if I know that we had put money aside for that. If Main Street jumps ahead because all of a sudden they had a bad winter, uh, mm -hmm. it's not the only commercial district in this community. So what's the plan? Are they going to be a priority versus a, another nope. commercial district in this? No. Nope. The, the, the plan is, is both projects go off at the same time. Woods Hole and uh, Main Street will go off at the same time. Okay. Main Street, they'll, they'll pull the sidewalk and they'll do the bluestone in the spring. We tried to get it done before Memorial Day. And Woods Hole, um, the contractor, the uh, gas company is halfway through putting the laterals into the buildings. So in Woods Hole, the, the, uh, our contractor, who is Lawrence Lynch Corporation through the county, um, will go down there and they'll set the curbs that they need to set at the ADA ramps, the transition curbs. They'll set those for the sidewalk. They'll uh, put patch behind the sidewalk where they need to do, um, and they'll get ready for the milling of the roadways. And they'll mill the roadways and they'll pave the roadways for the spring. And then, because it's a tight area down there with all the pedestrians and the tourism and the vehicles down there, they'll pull out for the summer and then in the fall when they go back, they'll, do, they'll finish up and do the rest of the sidewalks. We have approximately, I'd say, if you added all the sidewalks lineal feet together, we have probably 13 to 1,500 lineal feet of sidewalk in Woods Hole that we'll be placing. So. Right, so, but I don't want to confuse the situation, but not only is the sidewalk need to be replaced, and I know it's on your plan, yep. but it's been exacerbated by the gas company 
which right. now has patches along the sidewalk and it's uh, in numerous locations. Right. Uh, wait until the fall there is, oh, oh, yep. that sounds great, but yep. it's going to look terrible for the entire summer season. Yep. Uh, what we can do is I'll, 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 I'll uh, speak with the contractor. I was down there actually today and I saw the work through the patches of the sidewalk. They broke the concrete sidewalk out and they just put an asphalt sidewalk as a filler. Um, we might be, we can take care of those sections that they disrupted and then in the fall go back and take care of the other sections that we planned on. Okay. So at, at least the, the, uh, the restaurants down there and the tourism down there, the, the uh, pedestrians will be able to walk on. Okay. Thank you. Somewhat of a flat surface and then in the fall we'll, we'll, we'll continue with the rest of the remainder of the sidewalk. We originally had, um, for last year, it was, the money was appropriated for it. We didn't get to it because we uh, this gas work was coming and we wanted to do the roadway first. Well, I appreciate that. But I, I do like this bluestone replacement option. Mm. I, I think it'll be easier for Public Works, too, because of the, uh, you'll be able to put the machines on it. They get the bobcat on it. You'll be able to scrape across that, whereas the other ones, it shales the uh, tops of the stone off. And, and I know the highway department at this time gets a lot of calls there in the summertime from people coming out of the restaurants and tripping and falling. So. All down Main Street, mostly on the south side. Okay. Any other questions from the board? There's no action that we need to take. This is informational only. The, the DPW is undertaking this as part of their day to day operation. So thank you for the update. Thank you. Um, if we could get the lights. Um, and before we continue, I am going to, um, we'll have a five minute recess so we can stretch our legs. Um, the board's been sitting here for almost two hours now, so uh, we'll uh, reconvene at 825.